Interstellar is an award-winning science fiction movie. It's excellent in terms of being scientifically accurate and has a brilliant narrative and effective storytelling. The Academy Award-winning visual effects, amazing direction, and very emotional and grounded approach to a relationship between a father and a daughter are just some of the things great about Interstellar. Kip Thorne, a Nobel Prize-winning physicist, is the author of the best-selling book, The Science of Interstellar. Thorne was an executive producer for the film. He laid the foundation for the physics presented throughout the movie. As he mentions in his book, he established two guidelines for the science of Interstellar. Number one. Nothing in the film will violate firmly established laws of physics, or our firmly established knowledge of the universe. Number two, speculations which are often wild about ill-understood physical laws and the universe will spring from real science, from ideas that at least some respectable scientists regard as possible. In this video, we'll be highlighting the scientific aspects of just some of the masterful scenes in the movie. The first will be the initial rocket takeoff scene, where Cooper, the protagonist, leaves Earth in search of a new home for humanity as the planet's resources grow scarce for its population. The science behind rockets is relatively simple. The exterior of a rocket is made similar to that of an airplane, with various light but durable materials such as aluminum and titanium. It also has a thermal protection system to protect against the high temperatures resulting from air friction. Alright, let's break this down. First we'll assume the rocket Cooper is piloting has a mass of 43,000 kilograms and a thrust force of 6.71 mega newtons, which are the average rocket mass and thrust force respectively. The net force will be equal to the force generated by the thrust minus the force of gravity. Air resistance will also play a role and is calculated by this equation, but for the sake of this course we'll ignore it. Substituting in, the force of thrust will equal 6.71 mega newtons. We then subtract 43,000 kilograms, which is the mass times 9.81, which is the gravity constant. Since the thrust is in mega newtons, we'll have to convert it by multiplying it by 10 to the 6th. This gives us a net force of 6,288,170 newtons. Now using Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration. We plug in the net force we had just solved for. 6,288,170 is equal to 43,000 times acceleration. We then divide the force by the mass to end up with an acceleration of 146 meters per second squared. The second scene we'll be discussing is the scene where artificial gravity is shown. Artificial gravity is used to maintain the astronaut's strength and prevent physical injury when reaching a planet with the force of gravity. For if an astronaut spends months in space at 0g and then reaches a planet with 0.4g, like Mars for example, their body would require time to adjust. This is time they may not afford. Interstellar uses rotational artificial gravity, which is actually scientifically achievable and a great demonstration of a scientific concept. This same concept is also demonstrated towards the ending of the movie with the Cooper Station. It is essentially a giant O'Neill cylinder that orbits Saturn. It has houses, playgrounds, and parks that mimic Earth and are maintained by artificial gravity gravity also generated by rotation. The spaceship is designed in a way where the parts of the ship that hold the astronauts rotate about a center. This allows for a centripetal force to be present. In order to mimic Earth's gravity, the centripetal acceleration must be the same as the Earth's gravity acceleration, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. To calculate this, we use the equation A equals W squared times R, where A is the acceleration, W is the velocity, and R is the radius. Let's assume the spaceship has a radius of 20 meters. We'll have to account for the changes from RPM to radius per second by multiplying by 2 pi over 60. Solving will give us 6.68 rotations per minute. This design is not perfect, however. There are some issues that may still face the astronauts. For example, since the force applied is directly proportional to the radius, and the head is closer to the center of rotation than the legs, blood will flow towards the legs. This opens the door for research in finding a design that fits the behaviors and habits of astronauts aboard the ship. In the end, Interstellar remains one of the most scientifically accurate Hollywood movies due to the tremendous amount of research and effort that went into its most minute details.